the petrochemical era grew and grew, warning signs emerged that some of these chemicals could pose hazards. The data initially were trivial, anecdotal, but gradually a body of data started accumulating to the extent that we now know that the synthetic chemicals which have permeated our workplace, our consumer products, our air, our water, produce cancer and also birth defects and some other toxic effects. Rachel Carson once said, man's endeavors to control nature by his powers to alter and to destroy would inevitably evolve into a war against himself, a war he would lose unless he came to terms with nature. Rachel Carson was raised on a small farmhouse in a river town in western Pennsylvania called Springdale. It was her mother who she credits for introducing her to the world of nature. Later in her life, environmentalism and observing the world around her became her passion. As she grew older, she decided to enroll in college. She attended Pennsylvania College for Women in 1925. Originally, she went in as an English major because she enjoyed writing. Later in her college career, she decided to switch her major to biology. Because of her expertise in both biology and writing, she got a part-time position at the U.S. Bureau of Fisheries in 1935. Her job involved creating a seven-minute radio program on marine life called romance underwaters. While holding this job, she continued to submit conservationist writings to newspapers and magazines. In these articles, she stressed the importance of living with the environment and trying to satisfy both the fishermen and the fish. Carson became aware of the misuse of pesticides while she was associated with the Fish and Wildlife Service. She was disturbed by the large amount of use of synthetic chemical pesticides after World War II. The chemical that concerned her the most was DDT. She once said, The more I learned about the use of pesticides, the more appalled I became. I realized that here was the material for a book. What I discovered was that everything which meant most to me as a naturalist was being threatened, and that nothing I could do would be more important. She decided to use her skills in both writing and biology to warn the public about the long-term effects of misusing pesticides. Her early studies of marine life for the Fish and Wildlife Service gave her the base for her research. She was able to see from that research the disastrous effects of pesticides on marine wildlife. Carson was aware of the long-term effects of pesticides. She also was aware of the controversy of the subject. She understood that the farmers saw the need to use pesticides to stimulate crop growth. She decided to write Silent Spring after she researched for years across the United States and Europe. She had help from Shirley Briggs, a former Fish and Wildlife Service artist who had become the editor of an Audubon Natural Society magazine called Atlantic Naturalist, and Claris Cottom, another former Fish and Wildlife Service employee who provided Carson with the support and documentation on DDT research conducted, but was not generally known. Silent Spring was produced in 1962. In this book, she urged change of the practices of agricultural scientists and the government. She revolutionized the way people looked at the natural world. Carson made it clear that human beings were just one part of the environment and that everything we do affects the environment greatly. Some things we do alter the environment so greatly that they are irreversible. She said, The human race is challenged more than ever before to demonstrate our mastery, not over nature, but of ourselves. In Silent Spring, Rachel Carson describes the devastating effects that pesticides have on the environment. She stresses that once they are sprayed, the pesticides never go away. The pesticides that were sprayed with the intended purpose of killing off one weed kill other plants and animals around it. The poison is stored in the soil and can affect later generations of organisms that attempt to live on that land. Also, the contaminants can travel to other parts of the world through groundwater and rain. Carson stresses that these poisons not only affect the plants and the small animals living in a certain area, but they also affect humans. Farmers and sprayers are in contact with these chemicals on a daily basis. 
Many of these chemicals can have fatal effects if they are breathed in or consumed by eating something that was grown in the contaminated soil. Silent Spring revolutionized the way people viewed the natural world. People were more aware of the fact that their actions affect other organisms around them. Many people considered humans to be the rulers of the earth. We are constantly changing the environment to fit our needs. Carson showed that when you narrow it down to size, we are just one part of an ecosystem. And when we damage one part of the ecosystem, we're really hurting ourselves in the process. There was great controversy surrounding her book. The pesticide companies tried to discredit her. Some, such as those in the chemical industry, considered Carson to be an alarmist. But she just brought humankind down to size. Many criticized that Silent Spring didn't mention any of the benefits of pesticide use. In response to the release of this book, many chemical manufacturers had campaigns and released pamphlets about the benefits of pesticides, such as cutting down on disease carried by insects. Companies also argued that without the use of chemical pesticides, the world would not be able to feed itself. Ironically, the publicity from these chemical manufacturers made the book more popular, and in response, more people read it. The overwhelming majority of people were on Carson's side. It wasn't long after the publication that people started to take action in their own environments. After President Kennedy read the book and saw the response of the public, he called for a testing of the chemicals that were mentioned in the book. As a direct result of these studies, DDT was banned and environmental legislation was added. Al Gore spoke of the impact of Rachel Carson's Silent Spring. It brought environmental issues to the attention of not just industry and government, it brought them to the public and put our democracy itself on the side of saving the earth. Rachel Carson and her publication of Silent Spring is considered to be the jumpstart of the modern environmental movement. She made the public aware that they were just one part of a delicate ecosystem that they were slowly destroying. Rachel Carson revolutionized agriculture, and in turn, she affected the safety of thousands and thousands of people. She once said, We stand now where two roads diverge, but unlike the roads in Robert Frost's familiar poem, they are not equally fair. The road we have long been traveling is susceptibly easy, a smooth superhighway on which we progress with great speed, but at its end lies disaster. The other fork of the road, the one less traveled by, offers our last, our only chance to reach a destination that assures the preservation of the earth.